Raiders would often prank prop strike uh, the back of those old World War II wooden aircraft carrier decks. So the solution came together to make the aircraft taller. But again, the taller the landing gear is, the less strong it becomes. So they decided to take the wings, pull them down a little bit, get to the lowest point, then mount the gear and bring the wings back up. And that is that inverted gold wing shape and became one of the most recognizable aircraft designs of World War II. When the Navy decided that they didn't want to use the Corsair on carriers for a while, they went on to send it to Marine Corps squadrons to land-based units. And one of the most famous of those units was the Black Sheep Squadron, VMF-214. It was led by Lieutenant Colonel Pappy Boyington. In the 1970s, there was a TV show that uh, shared the exploits of the Black Sheep Squadron. And of course, uh, that squadron, they were known as misfits, but they were in fact exceptionally skilled pilots. At this time, we're going to see if we can go up and say hello to Stan Music live in the course here. Stan, how do you copy? That's your last clear. We got it from Luke in and the way this wind is setting up. We may be able to actually get us some two or even three loose trees today in this. Tell us a second one. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, Stan, the Corsair is looking fantastic. You've got a lot of time flying a variety of warbirds. I know the Corsair is pretty high on the list. Yeah, but don't ever ask a guy to declare which one's the Slayer. That's like declaring like a redhead or a blonde better. <laughs> well, I tell you, my favorite airplane, Stan, is the one that I'm flying. Let's see if we can see out the third Very good. Well, the Corsair's got a lot of power. I was just telling the crowd stand about that uh, nearly 2,000 horsepower, and I'm told the Corsair flies just how, how kind of it looks. It's a good flying airplane, and it's certainly a lot of performance. You're going to be approaching in uh, at air speeds, I would guess, close to what, about 280, 300 miles an hour? Pretty close. It's actually very, very close. I will indicate about 250 knots at the bottom, but of course that's a little over 280 miles an hour. Right there is our 250. We're going to come up, and as we come up, we're going to roll over the top. We come over the top. And direct our energy away from the craft, but away in a way that we can actually do. If you think of why I was doing this four times in a row, actually have a So what I'm going to do here is do the other first, or okay, the second uh, fourth of it, and then we'll have a half of a clover leaf done. Absolutely, and a very graceful maneuver indeed. Well, the airplane looks great. You know, they say the job of one of the airplanes, like some of the other guys fly, to make the pilot look good. The job of the pilot in this airplane is to make the airplane look good. Fortunately, the course there makes that a very happy occurrence. Yes, indeed. And I would be remiss, Stan, not to mention as well, you are a proud member of uh, the Commemorative Air Force in Air Base Georgia, where this aircraft uh, hails from in Peachtree City. Tell us a little bit about that. The Commemorative Air Force was started in 1957 by Lefty Gardner and Lloyd Nolan. They not only brought in Red Nose, which is our, our P-51, but this course there was the second aircraft that came into the fleet, and they decided to preserve a living example of each and every type of World War II aircraft, on both sides. And they had a lot of, over the years, 
Several of them have been destroyed. Now there you saw a revert of... back during the uh, late 1930s it has stuck ever since that time. That's absolutely correct, and it is absolutely a graceful maneuver, and you have to absolutely get the downline working on it. That time you probably saw it. the wind was trying hard to push you in. And of course, we always have to maintain at least 500 feet from the spectators if we've got our show lines out there. That's for safety, but uh, I know you're working hard up there, particularly at the slow speeds, too, with that wind. And of course, the course there, just like the Mustang, is fast enough that it ends up having to be at the 1,000-foot line. We have a 1,000-foot marker out here. Again, beautifully done by the Vanilla Air Show folks. We're going to give you a half-reverse Cuban 8. Turn back around. We're going to give you another big barrel roll. Then we're going to demonstrate the slow speed capabilities of the aircraft. Of course, as you know, the aircraft came aboard the carrier, and we'll put the tail hook down and the gear down to let you see that. But as well, it was one of those things that the, the week when we come down after our show, we're going to give you a demonstration of the folding wing. Yes, indeed, and magnificently performed, Stan. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got it open so he can hear you in the cockpit. Let's make some noise for Stan Music and the FG-1D Corsair. Hear that, Stan? Stan, I appreciate you very much. The Corsair and the CAF are very, very delighted to be a part of this air. The approach of the ship, you'd have to deal with that. You'd have to look at the, uh, with the, uh, the uh, LSO as he was on there to see what he wanted in terms of your wings. And then it's come in and cut the power and land. But on the other hand, we're going around. Now, you that uh, keeps these airplanes flying in the air where they belong. We firmly believe it's certainly one thing to see uh, one of these vintage warbirds in a museum in a dusty corner somewhere, but certainly a visceral experience to feature it and see it in flight. Now we're going to pick up a little speed, go right down the runway, pull out, do a photo pass, and then land. Stan, it was a uh, great opportunity to speak with you live from the cockpit today. Thanks for doing that. Down our taxiway in front of us, give another great photo opportunity of this iconic warbird. And he's also going to showcase to us the ability of the Corsair to, in fact, uh, fold its wings. And it was on the aircraft carriers, and even today that you see with the F-18 Super Hornet, that they have the capability to fold the wings up. And that allows for more space on the aircraft carrier decks. We'll get a chance to check it out, but I want you to take a look to the right as the action continues on. 